Hey there, Groovesters, Groovestars, Ridge Lee here with another episode of Lessons from the CEO, and I'm delighted to be joined today by a dear friend, Laura Johnston, CEO and founder of S3 Dental Growth, which is a company that helps successful entrepreneurs, dentists, become more successful. So, Laura, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to, to having this conversation with you. There's a lot to learn in the entrepreneurial journey. And I'm wondering, the first thing I love to ask people is, how did it start for you? Were you always an entrepreneur? Did you go one direction, then come back into being uh, a founder of a company and going in that direction? What was your journey like? Well, I was pretty fortunate. I was a child of a serial entrepreneur. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of my desire to um, become my own entrepreneur and, and, chase my own dreams came from my father. Um, and then I married uh, a, a dental anesthesiologist who was of course an entrepreneur. And, um, you know, it's just always been a part of my, a part of my life. Um, having said that, uh, you know, having that dream and chasing it and really getting into the nuts and bolts and, and knowing what those are, two different things, right? For sure. So let's talk about that. And, and, and because yes, all of it's in the execution, right? I was like, okay, we got to be executing. What do you think are the top characteristics of a successful entrepreneur based on your experience? Well, I know better now. I would say that the probably the number one priority is having a really clear vision, right? Like, and being able to communicate that vision to others. Um you know, as I got started, I was kind of finding my way and refining as I was bringing on team members. And so I don't know that I necessarily in the beginning was good at that. It was good at communicating my vision to others. Um, and it, it took some trial and error around that for sure. And what will be a second one? So communicating your vision, having a clear vision and communicating it. I think clarity for sure. I hear that a lot. It's just so important to know where you're going and what you're trying to accomplish. What would be a second one? I would say, well, there's three, you know, many times in every industry, you talk about time, money and team. So, um, you know, I, I kind of put vision in there too, but money, knowing uh, where you're um, spending, spending it appropriately like for me i was fortunate because i had saved up for this endeavor and so i didn't really um i didn't really budget like i should have right and so i just was kind of willy-nilly about how i spent my money if i had the opportunity to go back i probably would have um you know discussed it with other people who have gone through the startup process because as much as I've been around entrepreneurs my whole life, um, actually going through the startup process is, is was new for me. And I was just really excited and just went gung-ho. And if I could go back, I would probably have taken a few steps back and been a little more purposeful with how I spent my money. And then, you know, team, as you're, as you're growing, that team piece, um, once you have those two things in place, you can really make better strategic decisions about um, how you communicate with them, what you have them do, what the costs are associated with that. So yeah, time, money, team, and but vision is top, number one. Fantastic. So I always love to ask the question, share with us one error or setback, something that happened, bigger the better kind of thing, and what you learned from it. Yeah, I spent a very large chunk of money on trying to become my own marketing expert. And I will tell you that I do believe that you know, having a general understanding of the different components of your business, of course, is super important. And being educated enough to make strate strategic decisions is important. But I spend a lot of time and money trying to be that expert in my own business rather than just hiring out that piece. Um, and so, yeah, if I ha if I could go back, I would do that. I would find experts like yourself in different areas of marketing that um that I could just rely on their expertise rather than trying to spend the bandwidth learning it myself. Yeah, in, in, in that regard, tell us what do you think is the value of ongoing personal and or professional development? Oh my goodness. Uh yeah, I'm I am a all about the lifelong journey of learning. Um things are changing so quickly, right? So we do have to stay 
um, you know, keyed into learning and growing, becoming better business owners. Uh, you know, that's how you be become agile. And we don't we can't predict what's out there. But if we're um, moving with uh, the trends as we can and staying informed about what's happening in our industry and in, in other industries, um, you know, that's key. But also stay networking is huge, right? So as things are changing, that you know people who are also staying relevant in their industry so that they can better help you. Um, and that's key too. And and how what do you do in coaching your clients to help them also get on this track? And we we you and I agree one hundred percent. This is critical. You got to stay relevant. You got to keep learning. Got to keep on that track of always seeking. How do you coach your clients to do that? To do that. Well, that's a good point because in dentistry, continuing education is required, but most often that's. Uh, a, from a clinical perspective, right? So there, there's so much changing, so much technology, um, including AI that's really benefiting the dental space. But, uh, and I think that a lot of dentists are are hyper-focused on the clinical side of that, but there's so much that can be done in the, in the business systems part of that. And that's kind of my area of expertise, um, how to um, build effective systems and technology is changing and even in the systems constantly. So um, I think, you know, as I coach them to that, uh, really it's about surrounding yourself again, not trying to be the expert in all those things, but surrounding yourself with people and coaches and mentors who, and team members, right? Team members that, and you encourage their growth. That's probably the primary way that I you know, that I recommend to my dentist is keeping your, your team um, growing with the times as well and invest in them. You know, I, I personally am a huge mentor kind of guy. I like seeking out mentors everywhere. Who's my mentor for this? Who's my yoga mentor, my writing mentor, my business mentor, my spiritual mentor. What's your thought on that? The difference between obviously coaches that we find to help us with professional development and mentors that kind of seem like you have a deeper relationship with they're willing to tell you how it is without sugarcoating things or without having necessarily a financial interest. What do you think the value of that is? Well, it's, there's a huge value in that. And I think it's important to have all of those things. And, and I do believe a coach should be honest enough to not sugarcoat it, by the way, but uh, having a mentor who has maybe gone through some things you haven't, because really a coach is, is helping you um, to uh, dig into what you know and, and what you, you know, just bring out and implement what you know. Whereas a mentor is really more about they've experienced the things you want to experience. They're a they're a guide and a an example of where you're trying to get. And so that's invaluable, right? Like you don't know what you don't know. So unless you're engaging with people who are doing things differently or bigger than you are. Um, you might miss miss out. And what do you think? I, a lot of people say, well, I don't know how to find a mentor. And what I've found is that often it's just as simple as saying, hey, can we periodically check in with each other? Would you be available to da da da? Because most of the people who have walked the walk successfully are generally happy to share that. Yeah, that's what I found as well. That's what I found as well. So just being, um, I guess, brave and confident enough to to recognize and then also being willing to bring your your value to the table too right like so what's your value proposition so that when they're getting together with you you're you're um you know benefiting each other yeah i think so too i think that's exactly right because the mentor does benefit from sharing as well and teaching okay so i know there's just no way to go through this conversation without talking about the impact of ai so tell us your thoughts on the impact of AI. What are you doing about it? What are you seeing toward the future? What's all that look like for you? Well, in my own business, I'm in the baby stages of utilizing it. Of course, I, I'm engaged on uh, ChatGPT and and searching the um, fabulous web for its, you know, for content and um, learning. Uh, but I mean, as you and I have gone through, it's just limitless in its capability. Um, I know in the dental practice, AI is um, assisting in, um, you know, diagnostics and 
case presentations and um, every, every, all things clinical as well as uh, conversations that you can have in systems on, on the phone with, with patients. Like there's, there's no limit. Um, you can actually be talking to a client uh, or excuse me, a potential patient hang up the phone and there are platforms that will then um, diagnose the conversation you just had with that patient and give you input as to the a better conversation that you could have, right? To better engage with or, uh, so, I mean, it is just incredible what is possible out there. And I, I think, I mean, I know it's been around a long time, but in terms of what's been possible for just the everyday human is, is incredible. Yeah. And I think also, at least my, my experience has been that it's easy to go down a massive rabbit hole <laughs> in multiple directions, uh, when if you stay in your lane about what you know and figure out how to use the tool in your lane, it can do amazing things. Fortunately, it's not like farming. You buy a tractor, it's only good for being a tractor. AI is good for so many things that it kind of opens up almost too big of a window for those of us who could go all sorts of places when really, okay, wait, what can I use this tool to help and serve my community, my clients, my patients, et cetera. Otherwise you just get overwhelmed very fast. Uh, yeah, well, I've, I've had conversations with my daughter who doesn't who hasn't been utilizing it and only saw AI as kind of a joke, like because she's still just coming out of the college phase and how people are utilizing it in these, you know, unimportant ways, right? Or, or what, you know, silly ways. Um, all the way up to, like I said, you know, diagnostics and, and, and building, building perfect, you know, restorations, things like that. It's, it's just incredible what it can do, but you're right. Just kind of staying in your lane and, and refining um, your use of it to better, best serve you is, is the smart way to go about it. Right. For sure. <laughs> so here's a question I'd love to ask. If you had three books or three resources that you would recommend to beginning entrepreneurs that served you, that, that had value for you, what would they be? Well, the first one I would say, because I just told you how important I think having a vision is, um, I love Cameron Harold's vivid vision. Um, and he takes it through just, you know, not being just a statement on the wall, but how to really create a vision that you can share with your team to execute. Um, I think the other one I really so love- funny, I gotta interrupt you, but- <laughs> Cameron's a friend of mine and I haven't read it. I better go get the book and read you it. You better go get that right away. <laughs> I love so it. so funny, Cameron. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a great guy. I met him um, actually in uh, Phoenix a few years back, but um, but I wouldn't say that I know him, but I would love to. Uh, then the other one I would say is um, John Matone, Intelligent Leadership. Um, I really like how that, you know, takes a, a deeper to me, a really deep uh, view of leadership and really takes it into your inner core and how that impacts your outer core decision making and critical thinking, all of those things, but who you are as a person, how that um, impacts your leadership. I love that one. Uh, what's another one? Um, I would say probably The Infinite Game. I'm, I'm sure everybody's read that, but I, Simon Sinek, I love that book because every interaction that you have as you network with people, you know, continually having great interactions and never letting the small stuff uh, um, impact the relationships that you've built because you never know when they'll come back around. Mm -hmm. And are you a big reader? I love to read. I have, yes, I love, I love to read. But are you I like have, me when you find I'm yourself really collecting stuck. them and then they start to stack up and you've got your list of the ones you're trying to get to? I would say that, yeah, during COVID, I, I read a lot, but I also... Um, collected a lot. So I still probably have, um, I would say of my collection, I still have a third of the books I own still to read. <laughs> I might have to send you another one. I've written okay. it now, so <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, for sure. All right. So here's probably my favorite question. If you had a time warp like this pen, you could go and you could jump back 20, 25 years. And with the knowledge and wisdom and experience that you have today, share some thoughts and ideas with 
the young Laura, I mean, not that you're not young now, but the younger Laura of 20, 25 years ago, what would you like to share with her? Let's see, 20 years ago, uh, I'll be honest on my age, I would, you know, I was between 30 and 35 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, I would be between 30 and 35. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, I was a, I was a young mother and I had a lot of kids. I had five kids. So, um, and that was amazing, but I probably would have stayed in to the industry and what was happening during that time more. I, I think that we go, you know, everything in its season, but, um, I think, you know, building a network during that time uh, that was, you know, staying in touch with my professional side during that time, I think would have been um, what, I, what I would change. I mean, I love my life. I, I I don't know that I would change too many things, but it would have made it easier. I think coming out of of that phase of my life and into this phase to um, to have stayed better connected. So that's maybe one of the reasons why I love the infinite game so much, because it's it's uh it's all connected and, and i think that's a common thing you know laura in in many of the podcasts that i do we have the conversation people say well i wouldn't change anything because i love where i am i was like but that doesn't mean that you couldn't give some advice right that you couldn't pass on something that might have you know maybe made a little shift one way or another just like you just said building that network knowing that everything has a season that there's a time for those kinds of things it's just kind of fun, right? Yeah, yeah. So as you look forward now, um, as you continue your entrepreneurial journey, you talked at the very beginning about the clarity of the vision. So what is your vision looking forward? So my vision is um, really about building a community. Um, that's one thing that I, I think that is an important component, especially as teams having those peer connections learning from each other. Um, my greatest lessons have come from really what I have taken away from other people who have been willing to share. Um, so I love the idea of building a community in the dental space of, of practice managers and um, dental entrepreneurs. I know that you know the dental industry is changing very quickly into a, a DSO type space, which I think is, is you know not a bad thing. I think there's great parts to that. I think it, there's great parts to staying um, a dental owner and, and, you know, keeping your autonomy. But I, I just don't think there's anything that's necessarily bad about it. But for me personally, I really love working with dentists who um, uh, are passionate about maintaining their ownership and keeping their, their practice small and helping them to have resources to make that possible so that they, you know, there's so many bits and pieces. I think, I think dentistry is probably one of the most complicated small businesses out there because of all of the insurance and compliance and then all the other things that you normally have to do to run a business. So as, as easy as I can make it for them to enjoy uh, maintaining their ownership, that's, that's my goal. That's my vision. You know, it sounds like you love the small entrepreneur, not the big enterprise over there. Helping that I, out. I, have a, I, I think there's a place for everything. I, hey, man, I'm a big fan of Amazon, so I like big, big enterprises as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, All right. Yeah. Final words. Final words from Laura, based on your experience and, and the great journey that you've had to the budding entrepreneurs out there, whether they're young entrepreneurs in their journey, more veteran seasoned entrepreneurs that are jumping back in because of the internet. What would you want to say to the entrepreneurs that are out there giving us, give us a couple final nuggets. Yeah. One of the things I didn't touch much on is it really is so important to know your numbers. Don't put off the things you hate doing in your business uh, because, and, and stick to the easy things. Like you, you got to balance out doing the, the things you hate in, <laughs> in entrepreneurship, right. As well as the things you love. So um, finding some balance in that and then just always surrounding yourself with people who are a great support to uh, build on your success. Exactly right. I love those words. Laura Johnson, thank you very much for giving us the time today. Deeply appreciate it. And I know that many people will benefit from 
all of the wisdom that you shared with us uh, as we all continue in our journeys of entrepreneurship. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me.